coming to you live. I'm Jim Romanovich, and welcome to the Shadow Podcast on Radio Retropolis. Our next episode of The Shadow is called The Temple Bells of Nibon, which aired October 24th, 1937. So let's get to it. Here are Orson Welles and Agnes Moorhead, The Temple Bells of Nibon, on Radio Retropolis. <laughs> <laughs> Blue Cole presents The Shadow, the man of mystery who strikes terror in the very hearts of sharpsters, lawbreakers, and criminals. Today, the Temple Bells of Nebon. Friends, if you want to be sure that the fuel you get to heat your home this winter is safe, healthy, and economical fuel, then by all means, buy Blue Coal, the finest of Pennsylvania hard coal. Remember, this superior quality anthracite has been colored a harmless blue at the mines so that you can recognize it at a glance. So take the guesswork out of your fuel buying. Get America's finest anthracite. Ask for Blue Coal by name. Order a supply tomorrow. The bells, shadow, the bells of Niva, they will reveal you. Your third mistake, Sadi, and your last. <laughs> no, it is your mistake and your last. This is the end of your career as the shadow. Oh, Margot, we'll make this a large evening. A couple of hours at the Club Caliph. Does that intrigue you? Oh, lovely, but not too late. I have an appointment at 10 in the morning at the Women's Club. They're trying to get some action on this terrible narcotic situation. Oh, yes, I read about that. Oh, the stuff's being peddled all over town. They found school children using it, society women. Why, it's already caused a half dozen suicides. Yes, I know. It's terrible stuff. Oh, it needs the shadow to get at the bottom of it. Yes, I know, dear, but for tonight, I, I do enjoy just being myself. Lamont Cranston, dilettante. Let's be the shadow only in real emergencies. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, they, they tell me there's a lovely Indian dancer at this new club, Caliph. Indian dancer? Mm-hmm. You know, there's the place just there. Club Caliph, driver. Yes, sir. Lamont, you are going to do something about it. You've started already. Perhaps. Well, here we are. All right, driver. There you are. Thank you, sir. Oh, that looked like young Jerry Gleason just going in. Yes? I was that young man's father. I'd spank him and keep him home occasionally. Spoiled son of a wealthy sire. Mm. Here, let me have your coat. I'll check it with mine. Good evening, Jerry. Oh, Oh, hello, Miss Lane. Your father and sister well? I haven't seen them lately. Yes, yes. Uh, I'm sorry, but I can't wait right now. I've got to see someone, and it's important. I'm sorry. Uh, but Jerry... Hello. What ails young Gleason? I don't know. He seems awfully upset about something. He doesn't look well either. Pale and shaky. Mm, you're right, he doesn't. Something curious about that boy. Mm. Well, let's go in. <laughs> May I show you to a table, sir? Well, take this table by the dance floor, thank you. Oh, there's someone getting up to speak. We seem to be just in time mm. for the main attraction. Apparently. Ladies and gentlemen... We take pleasure in presenting the fascinating and beautiful dancer of the Far East, Sadi Bel Ada. For our first number tonight, she will give you the dance of the cobra. Sadi Bel Ada. Look, isn't she lovely? Yes, a real thing too, real Hindu. Hmm. It's odd, you know. Goodness. Look, she's taking a snake out of that wicker basket. A live cobra. Oh, heavens. You know, the cobra is connected with the old Indian mysticism. 
the most ancient of magic. See how she quiets the snake, makes it sway to the motion of her hands. Mm. It's a form of mesmerism. We've never improved on that with all our modern psychology. I hope its fangs have been removed. Well, they undoubtedly have. So, this is the one they call Sadi Belada. Jerry Gleason with that strange look in his eyes. An epidemic of narcotic smuggling. Sadi Belada. Oh, how graceful she is. <laughs> she keeps looking over here, Lamont. Yes. It's coming this way. Well... Souvenir for the beautiful lady, sir. Oh, oh, a bracelet. Thank you. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim, fair lady. Ah, you know the tongue of Mother India, sir. Only enough to make a small prayer. Only enough for that, Sadi Bel Ada. It is good sometimes to know a small prayer. Hmm, just in case of an emergency? Yes. You are very wise, sir. In case you should meet someone who could destroy you, sir. I see. Bella, just what did she mean by that? I don't know exactly. Funny sort of thing. She seems to know something about me. I'm trying to recall where I've seen that face. <laughs> by the door. Why, it's young Jerry Gleason. She handed him something. Good Lord. He's going out with her. What's the matter now? It just struck me, Margot. That boy's face. The color of his skin. You mean drug? Yes. The poppy of India. Oh, but not Jerry Gleason. Oh, that'd be too awful. And our own friend Claire Gleason, his aunt, who's tried so hard to steer him straight since his mother died, it would just about kill her. Come, Margot. We must do something. We're going to. I did come here tonight with a vague idea that this Indian dancer might have some connection with the thing. With her veiled threats and Jerry's interest in her, I'm pretty sure but now. What are you going to do? I think the shadow will pay a call on Sadi Bellada in her dressing room. I think the shadow can strike back. <laughs> Yes? Uh, can anyone overhear us here in your dressing room? Oh, no. What do you want, Alexis? A message from the captain. What then? Tomorrow is the day. The police are getting closer. We sail tomorrow night at eight. I am not afraid of the police. But there is somebody else I am not sure about. You took care of Jerry Gleason? I gave him his medicine and sent him home. But you bring him tomorrow night? Do not fear, Alexis. Jerry will be with me when we sail. <laughs> I have a way to let him know. Good. But the air blows from that window. Close it, Alexis. Oh, too bad we have to terminate. The grand success of Sadi Bel Adam. The club caliph? Yes. But as the Americans say, business is business, yes. And we still have a small business with the rich papa of Jerry Gleason. <laughs> no doubt the richest part of our business, sweet Sadi. Yes. The rich man will pay well. <laughs> <laughs> Who laughs? Where are you? Speak. I am here. In the shadow. But I'm afraid you can't see me. Speak. And say who you are. Have you never heard of the shadow? Oh, the shadow? So it is you. Have I not somewhere in the past seen your face and known your name? I think so. Uh, did you enjoy yourself tonight? I warn you, Sadi Belada. 
Leave the Gleason boy alone. The boy to whom you give the evil drug. I have no fear of you, Shadow Side. I hold a greater power. I hold the power of the temple bells of Niban. Huh? You command the temple bells of Niban, do you? Yes. Either you lie or you desecrate a great gift. Put your strength against mine, White Ifandi, and you will see how I desecrate that gift. I can cast your little spells aside and make them nothing. I can kill you. Kill me? The shadow, Sadi? Yes. If you dare to come to me again, will you come? Who could refuse such an invitation? Especially when made by so charming a lady as yourself. Yes, I will come. And be sure you don't mistake my voice when I do come. Sadi Bellada. <laughs> well, what is it, Sergeant? Uh, excuse me, Commissioner. Old man Gleason is outside and insists he's got to see you. Gleason? You mean Andrew Gleason? Sure, the big Wall Street banker, friend of the mayor. Shall I let him come in? Or... All this claim deficiency where it doesn't do any good. I want to see you, Commissioner. All right, Mr. Gleason. What the devil is this town coming to? Well, if you'll tell me what you're getting at... My I... boy is what I'm getting at. He's lying home there with the worst case of delirium cremens I ever saw. Spent the night sopping up liquor in these rotten hunky tonks. Mr. Gleason, if you think the police department's going around playing wet nurse to all the spoiled kids in this town... It... Is this what you came to see me about, Mr. Gleason? It certainly is. Well, I happen to have more important things on my mind right now. Then you better get this on your mind. Because if you don't, I'll see to it that there's somebody here who does. And I can do it. Good day to you. Well, seems like this was a busy day, sir. What with uh, drunken college boys and millionaires. If this is another of those... Uh, Commissioner Weston speaking. <laughs> Why, you, you... Don't lose your patience, Commissioner. The shadow has information that may help you. Young Jerry Gleason is becoming a drug addict. What? Yes. A victim of this flood of drugs being peddled on our streets. It might cost you your job. Are you interested, Commissioner... <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, while we're waiting for the shadow to return, I want to relay a bit of information I'm sure homeowners here in the New England states will find particularly interesting. When buying your winter supply of fuel, bear this in mind. Anthracite coal is unequaled for home use. It is not a flashy fuel that burns furiously for a little while, then dies down completely. On the contrary, folks, anthracite burns slowly, steadily, evenly, all day long, and so enables you to maintain an even, healthful room temperature. That's why anthracite is called the solid fuel for solid comfort. And friends, remember this. Furnaces, cook stoves, and space heaters in this section of the country were especially designed to burn anthracite. So... Insist on anthracite, but get the best. Order Blue Coal. It's America's finest. Blue Coal is mined by the Glen Alden Company, the world's largest producers of Pennsylvania anthracite. To guarantee you the greatest heating satisfaction at the lowest cost, Blue Coal is laboratory tested for purity and uniformity of size. So you see, friends, there's no need to take chances on unknown fuels. Order Blue Coal today. You will find the name of your nearest Blue Coal dealer... Listed in the where to buy it section of your classified telephone directory under the name Blue Coal.
You hear, Margot? Yes. As though they came out of nowhere. The temple bells of Niban. Listen. Three soft notes will strike, and then the spell will be broken. They're gone. But Harlemont, here we sit in your apartment listening to weird temple bells. Where did they come from? How did you do it? Not too difficult, Margot, dear. For those who've learned its secret, its secret based on the phenomenon of telepathy combined with the old science of the yoga, the same magic which gives voice to a shadow. It's a very awe-inspiring demonstration. If there should be someone who could command the temple bells of Naban, the shadow would cease to be a shadow. You mean... You mean they could see? Yes. At the last stroke of the bell, I would be only what I am. Lamont Cranston. My magic invisibility, so to speak, dispelled by this greater power. And, and you think there is someone with this power? I'm not sure. Years ago, in India, a yogi priest, keeper of the Temple of the Cobras at Delhi, taught me the ancient mysteries. He taught me the mesmeric trick that the underworld calls invisibility. There was a small girl, his niece, who used to sit and listen, staring up at us with her round, dark eyes. She was very clever. Clever. I've often wondered what became of her. But the cobras. You don't mean the Indian doctor at the club camp. I'm not sure, Margot. I'm not sure. Oh, but this worries me, Lamont. Aren't you going into dangers too big for you? Don't worry about me, Margot. Worry about the boy and all other poor, miserable wretches in the toil of this awful drug traffic. Is young Gleason safe? Yes, his father made him go to bed. They thought he'd been drinking too much. Well, I guess it's time I got busy. Have you found out anything else? One or two things. In Sade Delada's dressing room, I found a note signed by a Captain Marlin of the freighter Alborek Castle. I think there's some connection there. I'm going to find out. First, though, I'm going to the zoo. The zoo? Yes. Yes, I want to borrow a decorative little reptile from my friend the curator. He's usually very obliging. Who opened that door? Look. Hanging from the doorknob. A snake. Don't touch it. It's all right. It's a dead one. There's a note with it. So, she's not bluffing. She does know who I am. Oh, Lamont, I'm, I'm frightened for you. What does it say? It says, dead cobras are better playthings than live ones. Was I mistaken? Then it's got a bell out of Oh, Lamont, Margo, I... it's a challenge. But the bell... The bells of Niban. Oh, I'm afraid the shadow this time will get beyond his death. We shall see, Margot. We shall see who is stronger. Sade and the bells of Niban. Or the shadow. And the snake. Show them. They think they can keep me a prisoner in my own house. Putting me to bed as if I was some half grown kid. What? What's that? Jerry. You hear me? Is it you, Sadi? Yes. My voice in your thoughts. Listen, Jerry. Come to me at the dock where we met before. Your medicine is waiting. Yes. Yes. Go aboard the ship I told you about. The Elbora Castle. You and I, Jerry. Yes. Yes. I am waiting, Jerry. But 
They've locked me in. Go through the window, Jerry. Come now. Yes, Sadie. The window. We were far at sea on our way to Rio. Oh, be patient. There are some notes was delivered to Papa Gleason? Yes. What was that? But there is nothing. Oh, it's you, Captain. Yes. We are leaving, Captain. Yes, we're getting underway now. We've got the boys stowed safely below, below decks. And the rest of the medicine? Oh, we got rid of that. What was left of it. A nice clean-up for all hands, not counting this Gleason job. That'll net us another 100,000, or nothing. Oh, well, we're fixed whichever way the dice roll. And after that, we live like kings, without a care, yes? Yeah? Not even a conscience to bother you. What? Sadie, he has come. I was afraid. Who said that? I did, Captain. So you're the one with your trick ghost talk and magic, eh? I'll make a shadow out of you soon enough. Not that way, Captain. No? Here, lock that door, Alexis. It is locked, Captain Mullin. But but the portholes... No one can get through those. Not even a shadow. (laughs) Save your laugh, whoever you are. We've got you. You're in this cabin somewhere. And this ship is outward bound. Laugh that all. I think you may have made three mistakes, Captain. One too many. Yes. Yes, Captain. But I do not make mistakes, Sad. That remains to be seen, Sadi Bellada. Then you will see. And me the wicker basket, Alex. Hey, what do you want to do? Yes, Sadi. I call the temple bells of Niban, Captain. The shadow has the power to blind your eyes. A trick he learned in India from a yogi who was my uncle. But I have a better trick. When the last bell sounds while the sacred cobra dances, you will see the shadow only as a man. Be ready to shoot, Captain. I'm ready. And now, my cobra... To dance with the bells of Niba. I wouldn't open that basket if I were you, Sadi Bellada. You watch my pretty cobra, Sad. He may find you even before the captain's bullet. You will die just as quickly. Dead cobras are better playthings than live ones. Bismillahi Ramani Rahim. Make your small prayer, Sad. And now, my pretty one, begin to dance. Be careful, Sadie Bell. The cobra moves towards you. My own pretty cobra. He knows me. You hear the bells? Shadow, the temple bells of Niban. I hear them. When the last bell strikes, we shall see our prisoner. And I am waiting for that minute. But Sadi, the cobra! Look out! He's going to strike! Alexis! Stop it! Quick! Drop the 
the last note for Alexis. Kill it. Sadie. Sadie. The shadow warned you, Sadi Pelada. You take credit for this too, do you? No. Sadi should have known it was not her cobra in the wicker basket. It was mine. She's dead. What's that? Who is it? Captain Allen, the police, the border. No, please, Captain Mullen, you do not shoot. Stop Stand back here. Drop that gun. I'll fix it. Oh. Put the bracelets on both of them, Sergeant. Right. <laughs> Dope smugglers, kidnappers, and from the looks, murderers. <laughs> this time, the police were too smart for you. Oh, decidedly. Huh? Who's that? Thanks for coming, Commissioner. You were very helpful. <laughs> and now, before today's adventure with the shadow comes to a close, John Barclay, Blue Coal's own heating expert, is here tonight to give us another of his practical talks on automatic heating. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Barclay. Good evening, friends. Last week, we discussed the importance of uniformly heated homes in avoiding cold. I told you how home temperatures could be kept uniform and automatically controlled with a blue coal heat regulator. I explained that the cost was only $18.95 plus a small installation charge. Now for a word about the convenience of this blue coal heat regulator. With one of these automatic regulators in your home, it is no longer necessary for you to adjust dampers by hand. The regulator eliminates need for frequent attention to the furnace. What do you have to do, Mr. Barclay? You simply tend to your furnace once in the morning and once at night. Just think of that, friends. You can enjoy the comfort and convenience of an evenly heated home, and yet you can come and go all day long without a thought or worry about the fire. Is it any wonder I'm so enthusiastic about the blue coal heat regulator? And too, although it costs only $18.95... It does about everything that the elaborate and much more expensive equipment does that many of your friends have. So, folks, why not get to your blue coal dealer tomorrow and ask him more about this blue coal heat regulator? At the same time, if you have any heating problems, discuss them with your blue coal dealer, too. He is the best informed heating expert in your community. With the assistance of his John Barclay trained serviceman, he will be able to save you money and help make your home more comfortable this winter than ever before. I thank you. The story you have just heard is copyrighted by The Shadow Magazine. The characters in this story are entirely fictitious. Any similarity to persons living or dead is purely coincidental. I'm Jim Romanovich. That was the Temple Bells of Nibon from October 24th, 1937. And I think we got a little bit of the mysticism and the, the skills, the temple skills that he learned in India, because his nemesis in this episode also came from that same arena. 
and tried to beat him in his own game. Didn't work. Of course, can't take out the shadow, right? Otherwise, he wouldn't have a show anymore. And Orson Welles really plays the shadow to the hilt. I mean, he is, when you, when you think of the shadow, you really think of Orson Welles because it's that unmistakable voice. It's that unmistakable laugh that he has. I wouldn't call it a sinister laugh, but it's sort of that I got you in my sights laugh. And I love that. He had a real grasp on who this character was. And anybody that came after him really had to live up. Just It's kind of like Basil Rathbone playing Sherlock Holmes. Anybody that came after Basil Rathbone had to pay tribute to Basil because Basil created a character that was just emblazoned in the minds of listeners and viewers forever. So, and it's the same here with The Shadow. Orson Welles was The Shadow. He was a tough act to follow, let me tell you. It also appears that, uh, as we're going along here, that this version of The Shadow is also a reboot of the series. I'm not saying that it is. It, that it, is. it just seems to me that it is, simply because we started up again with Death House Rescue, which was September 26, 1937. The last known episode that actually aired was two and a half years prior on March 27, 1935. They took two and, a, two and a half years off, which I believe they did to rest the character because it had been running for a few years, and probably to take it in a slightly different direction. So I think they wanted to retool it a little bit, brought in some professionals like Orson Welles and his company, and uh, made it into the great show that it became. Ironically, Orson Welles had not yet done his most infamous radio broadcast, which we also have here on Radio Retropolis. Make sure you go to the website to check it out, RadioRetropolis.com, uh, The War of the Worlds. But he was still uh, one of the top guys uh, in the business, certainly one of the top radio guys. He really made the shadow his own, and the series uh, was very, very successful from this point forward. That's it for this episode and for me. On Radio Retropolis. I'm Jim Romanovich. We'll see you next time. This is Radio Retropolis.